Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kika and would you just look, I just bought these peonies like maybe an hour ago and they're already blossoming. Mm. Peony season, my favorite season, even though that's like a total Instagram cliche. Today, we're gonna talk about how to get sponsorships on Instagram when you don't have a huge following. Because today, my friend, um, you don't have to be a huge influencer. A lot of brands are looking to work with much more niche and targeted audiences, and they're looking for those people who will have that authentic connection and relationship with their audience. So this is the best time uh, if you don't yet have a huge audience. And I'm saying yet because you're gonna get there if you put putting in the work and you're really taking your photography to that next level and putting in the hours. But this is absolutely great because that means that maybe you're curious to get some side income, get some brand deals, you think it's exciting and you're curious about this whole world. In today's video, I'm gonna share some tips that I think would have benefited me in the beginning uh, and hopefully you'll find some value in them. My own background is I've been a content creator and an Instagrammer for the past four years and I have done collaborations on Instagram with brands such as BMW, Disney, Oral-B, Vodafone, uh, most of them while I was living in London. And there are a lot of things that I wish I would have known and I just want to share these with you so that you can get started in this very exciting, very lucrative field and there is so much opportunity in it. Now, first off, I'm sure that you're curious about pricing. How much can you make in this industry when you do a brand deal? And um, of course, this will always a little bit vary uh, depending on context and all that taken into account, but roughly what you can sort of expect to be paid for a sponsored post, so that's one post, one photo, or it could be a carousel photo, is usually around $100 per 10,000 followers. Remember, this is just sort of very rough, but that's sort of what I see on a lot of these influencer platforms that is recommended. Of course, the price that you can negotiate and get for a sponsorship might be affected by your engagement rate. So engagement rate is basically how many people engage with your content. So if you posted a photo, are people commenting, liking, saving it? And is there just a buzz around it? And if you have a very low engagement rate, so say less than 1% of your followers ever like or comment, um, then that's not a great engagement rate. So you really want to try to get that engagement rate up. And so say if you have an engagement rate of around 10%, you can probably negotiate a higher fee and really leverage that when you're negotiating. Tip number one is, are you clear on what your niche is? So tip number one is actually more of a question. <laughs> so having a very clear and targeted audience or topic that you're talking about is very important um, when you're when you don't have such a huge following yet essentially because that means that the brands that potentially would like to work with you or that you would like to work with um, are going to find you more easily because they know that that audience that you've built is is or are is really <laughs> interested in the topic. So for example if your niche is vegan vegan food i don't know everybody keeps saying like vegan something when they use an example at the moment i feel that's the trend so let's do something different if your niche is travel um but travel on a budget for example which is well now it's corona so that's also not a great example um if your niche is gardening and more specifically gardening at home or urban jungle or urban gardening when you don't have so much space, then imagine when a brand finds you that have specifically those type of products, then they're immediately going to see like, oh, this person has that audience that is really interested in this urban gardening and you'll be much more likely to get a brand deal with them. And similarly, a brand that has a very specific set of values or aesthetic style, they're also going to want to look for influencers and Instagrammers that are in line with those. So this is also sliding into the next tip to make a list of the brands you'd like to work with. For the longest time, I was very vague and not specific at all, actually, about what brands I'd like to work with. And um, it took me a long time to find my niche. And I'm maybe not so um, traditional in the sense that my niche is not really, on Instagram at least, it's not 
uh, really one thing because photography and creative self-portrait is sort of what I do but then that can really encompass a lot of different things but I would uh, have hoped for myself <laughs> that I would have been earlier in sitting down and making a list of the brands I'd like to work with because when you do that then you can go and research those brands see what kind of style aesthetic they have and if it is at all <laughs> aligned with what you are doing and of course you should not compromise your own style but maybe it's still a good idea if you're really looking to work with a certain brand to think a little bit about is that at all realistic um are they or also look at what kind of collaborations they've done before what kind of voices and styles and um, Instagram accounts have they collaborated with before. The next thing that you can do, and I have done this several times myself, is to go and engage on those brands account. So you can go and comment under their posts, like of course, and uh, for example what's happened to me a couple of times, I've watched uh, certain brands uh, stories and uh, saw a product that I really liked and uh, maybe commented something and then they would reply and when I had that sort of in I would then say like hey I'd love to work with you or um, you know make some pretty photos with your products and then I got that dialogue going and because I was showing my interest first so you don't just have to wait for the brands to find you you can do the work and make sure that you're in the comments all the time and then if you're lucky they will go and check out like who is this person who is commenting all the time and also make sure that you comment something interesting something that will stand out and not just like oh love this or heart emoji but uh, something a little bit with more substance and more depth and they might come and check out your account love what you're doing and then it's a match once you have that initial contact with them you really want to make sure that you come up as professional and one thing that will make you definitely look professional is having your own website and today I'm really excited to talk about Zyro which is a website builder and you can also create an online shop in there and the reason I really love them is that they are super affordable which is great when you're maybe just starting out and you don't have a huge budget to put on a website yet so for as little as $2.61 no, two dollars and 61 cents per month you can get started and create a stunning website they have hundreds of designer made templates which is so assuring reassuring assuring um when you're not uh, a graphic designer and that's not your strong point hello uh I, for one, at least, uh, it's so difficult. Oh, there's a little bug here. Um, <laughs> I always find it's so difficult to make those choices and decisions. Like I can see when something is off, but if I have to make something from scratch, it will take me forever and it probably won't look that great, which is why I really like that they have all these templates. Then you can, of course, customize everything, drag and drop. It was super intuitive to use. I played around with it uh, a couple of days ago and thought I would make my portfolio page just with my photography, which is another super great point because their websites upload not upload load really fast <laughs> so when you're a user and you go to the website those photos and especially if you have a photography portfolio page you want to make sure that the photos will upload really fast so that anyone who comes to your website is not going to get stuck just uh, uploading or loading and then they're just going to leave your website so that is another huge huge plus if you're interested in trying out Zyro for yourself, you can head to zyro.deal slash kutuvakika and use the code kutuvakika for an additional 10% off. Great! I hope you have found these tips helpful and that they gave you some encouragement and maybe also took away some of the mysticism or mysteriousness around the whole brand deal world. I feel like it's something that maybe doesn't really get talked that much about um, and people sort of don't want to share their secrets. So if you have any questions, um, you can let me, you can let me know. No, you can ask them <laughs> in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer as much as I can. Um, I'd also just like to encourage you that if there is a brand you'd like to work with and you're curious about it, definitely reach out to them. Uh, don't just sit around and wait for them to come to you and find you. And even if it maybe doesn't lead to a brand deal immediately, they'll know that you exist. And it's about patience. It's about uh, really putting out your best work and not just thinking about uh, the numbers and all that stuff. It's really the work that you're doing and sharing and the topics and your tone of voice and all that, the quality, the quality of what you're sharing. That is what is gonna, in the end, 
lead you to get that work or those sponsorships. At least that's been very much my experience and also being consistent in your work. I've had quite a lot of campaigns that I got just because I had a specific style of photography and the sort of universe and the visual look and feel of my Instagram page. I know that some brands have been looking for specifically that when they have a campaign in mind. So sometimes it's just that. And that's why you also want to be really clear on what it is that you're about and what you stand for. So all these things, doing the deep work, even if it sometimes feels like, oh, is it ever gonna result in something? Yes, it does. Try to resist the kind of quick hacks or, or doing anything like that. Just keep uh, bring true to your work and putting it out there. And I'm sure success will follow. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found these tips helpful. Of course, everybody will probably have different experiences. These were my tips, the things that I think I would have benefited from in the beginning. Uh, let me know in the comments if there was something that surprised you or if there's something that you'd like to know more about. And I will see you next week. Take care, guys. Bye. Hello, a bee in my bonnet. Hello. There's a bee in my bonnet. Hello, hello. A bee in my bonnet. Hello.